scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ and wants you to attain. Tell the people, Thank right, you. When your children ask you, tell them this is what happened. Till today, the Jews practice this. Their children are not ignorant people at all. Why was this stone here? And they will tell you. To the point that we now voyage down there to learn after many years although scattered around the world they still preserve their history if we lose our spiritual history we're in trouble as a nation it's important to know what came from where so we know what to drive out and what to preserve if we don't have a history we will receive everything including things that should not be part of our growth process Praise the Lord. So we, we said a lot of things. Let me just do a quick recap. How that <clears throat> believers are classified um, two major dimensions. Remember yesterday's teaching? Number one, I said is classification based on identification. That means that the Bible classifies believers based on identification. And there are names that we are given. For instance, the sons of God. Remember? And the Bible says we are joint heirs with Christ. All of these names are identifications, I mean classifications based on our identifying with the Christ. But then the Bible also classifies us based on function and destiny. Remember that? And there are also names. The Bible says we are light. The Bible says we are salt. What again? We are kings, we are priests, we are ambassadors. You were sleeping yesterday. Witnesses, thank you. Are we together? Yes. And all of these are not just names. They have responsibilities. I didn't finish something I started teaching yesterday. It was while I was asleep. The Holy Spirit. I just turned just to, you know switch gear and I just remembered that I spoke about the gospel of salvation and I didn't finish it because I was going to tr contrast it with the gospel of the kingdom I felt so guilty in my heart I said no no Holy Spirit remind me when I'm back up here and you see they didn't even allow me to start he has quickly reminded me finish it finish it fast I told us that there are seven gospels now it doesn't just mean there are seven dimensions or operations are we together and one of it we call the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the father's love demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus his son right and the object the recipient of that benevolence is man are we together now um salvation spans across the entire creation but especially man salvation was not just for man alone it was for the entire creation but then especially man are we together and the bible tells us that when we believe that report and we believe that it is true the reward for believing that report is what we call zoe we clarified a few things yesterday that the way doesn't just mean eternal life it means the life of God when the Bible was canonized and it was being translated the Old Testament is written in Hebrew 
and the New Testament a combination of Greek and Aramaic. This is theologically speaking now. And when there is a system that is used in translating scripture, because Hebrew and Greek words are very deep, like Yoruba words, one word can mean almost 12 meanings. So when translating it, the scholars would have to sit down and examine the context and look for the best English expression that captures the thought in the heart of the writer. And so they came up with eternal or everlasting as the best description of that word Zoe. It was Apostle John who corrected it. He called it the life of God. Are we together now? Yes, so... Um, but the gospel of the kingdom in the gospel of salvation God is called father Jesus is called son and later sacrifice are we together yes man is grafted into a family and the cross and the blood you see and all of these things are the pathways through which man is restored but in the gospel of the kingdom God is no longer father God is king. Man is no longer son. Man is these names that I call you now. A witness, an ambassador. Are we together? Yes. In the gospel of salvation is God reaching out to man. The gospel of the kingdom is man responding back to God. You met my need by your show of love, but I know that you have a desire and I respond back as proof that I love you. Are we together now? And the Bible says the, what we call the end times, the signs of the end as we call it, um, theologically speaking, they have argued that there are several signs of the end times the prophet spoke, but according to scripture, there is only one sign of the end times. All of those things that are signs, the Bible says they are the beginning of birth pains. I'll never have an opportunity to understand what that means, but the, at least I know that for a woman, beginning of birth pains doesn't mean that you are ready to deliver. It just means you are around. Is that true? But there's one sign. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness not as a sermon to all nations and then after that the end will come so the coming of christ is not determined by him ah it's too early oh. you are supposed to be my friends this morning i mean <laughs> The coming of Christ is determined not by time, is determined by the completion of an agenda, prophecy. Are we together now? Yes. It is, it is one of the deep religious confusions that we inherited for a long time. That philosophy that God can just veto men and just show up. No. Even the concept of the thief in the night. Holy Spirit, help me. I think I should just sing to him to calm him down. So we go to our message today. You know, many believers have been deceived for many, many years that Jesus is coming um, how? As a thief in the night. It matters how we learn. I continue to say this, and it matters how that we, we are mentored. Jesus is coming as a thief in the night, not to the church. He cannot come as a thief in the night to the church. It doesn't make sense. A husband does not come back home as a thief. No, listen, that's not even it. 
let me just can I just clear this before we get to the word we are believers a Christian is one who has submitted to the authority of the word of God more than any opinion first Thessalonians chapter 5 this is where this confusion came from it's good to read your Bible let's let's go let's go there most believers don't read their Bibles first Thessalonians chapter 5 <laughs> Are we ready? We'll read it together. And I'm not going to talk. When we get to the place where I will talk, I will talk. One, two, go. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need. Please just go back there. You have no need, verse 1, that I write unto you, verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord Comet as a thief in the night. This is where many people stop. Verse 3. For when they, not you, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. This is the deliverance. Next verse. Read it if you are a Christian. But ye who are of the fold, brethren, you are living in the light. You are not in darkness that that day should overtake you. The Bible says the coming of Christ will be in the similitude of the days of Noah. The flood did not take Noah by surprise. The ark was made of gopher wood. Three stories. All the animals came in. When they came in, God himself Close the door and the flood started. Revival, revival. Let's go to revival. <laughs> Let's go to revival. I mean, it's good to come to church and be delivered. Real deliverance is preached. So we began to discuss that there are ordinances of revival that means there are authorized spiritual pathways to both activate and preserve the move of God a few things that you may want to note I'm sure that there should be a way of getting these teachings you know so I'm, I'm pleased you may want to get and listen to it again and again and again we did say that it is very usual for the last or current move of God to fight the next move of God if you have the time listen to my teaching why revivals die there is only one reason why revivals die the humanity of men the fact that those who pioneer and sustain these revivals are human the, the, the reality of our humanity interrupts God's program and most times revivals die so we picked on the principles number one yesterday was what if you remember prayer the ministry of prayer and I said a few things that I want to reiterate very important that the primary assignment of prayer is not for supplications the primary assignment of prayer is not even for warfare that prayer as designed by God was a system of edification. It's a mechanism by which believers transit. When you pray, it's akin to molting. The way a snake molds, you come out of the lower version of yourself into another dimension. For as long as our idea of prayer is just an instrument of warfare or an instrument of receiving things, our prayer life will not be rich because you will be frustrated by results you are trying to look at are we together now yes edification he says in acts chapter one you shall receive power that when the holy ghost comes whatever comes with him is called power in acts chapter two what came with him is tongues Acts chapter 1, he says the Holy Ghost is coming, but he's not coming empty-handed. 
that whatever you see him come with, the name of that thing is power. In Acts chapter 2, the name of what he brought, the Bible called it tongues. So there is a relationship between that tongues he brought and spiritual power. Hallelujah. It is important that believers pray. Bring me a weak believer, weak, confused believer, and submit that believer to a system of prayer, correct Bible-based prayer. Give that person one month, you will see that fear, limitation, timidity, it will just fade away. Strength. I can tell you why believers are very weak because we do not pray there is a testimony of prayer upon a man you know that this man is a man of prayer he may not be a man of knowledge but as far as the strength and the stamina is concerned you can know a healthy prayer life is discernible do you understand there is a light there is there is you can sense the impulses of a healthy prayer life. It's not by the huskiness of the voice, no. You can stand close to a man and know that this man's spirit man is weak, very, very weak. Even if knowledgeable, we need a lot of strength. We need a lot of strength for the journey ahead. We need a lot of strength. If you turn aside in the day of battle, the diagnosis is that your strength is small. So if because of rent, you go back and harass God and say, God, I've been trying for you. It's as if you are not seeing me. Those things are symptoms of a level of transition that has not happened yet in prayer. That when you ascend in the ministry of prayer, you get to a point where you can sit in the midst of fire. And you are not talking to God about the fire. You are talking to God about what happens after the fire. As if the fire is not there. It's a level of maturity that is proof of your growth. So you see people sit down and they are counseling others and laughing. But when they tell you what they themselves are going through, you say, and you have the grace to counsel. Something happened to them in prayer. Another expression of prayer, and I'm glad we're adults here. Prayer is akin to a man knowing his wife. All right, yes, you, it, it, it's, it's, it's like it's like it's like intimacy, a man knowing his wife. That means that you expect an exchange. In this case, you are the bride, and the husband, the Holy Spirit, who represents the presence of the Father and Jesus. So there is a transference of virtue and possibilities. You are impregnated with realities. So you leave that prayer place with a dimension of energy. Like a woman receives seed. She doesn't advise the seed to start growing or to get attached to their womb. Programmed in that system, the, the seed knows what to do and the womb knows what to do. Her assignment is just to receive it. And by the next day, she doesn't want to eat something again. So something happens to you in the place of prayer. When you are done, you will very soon find out that you didn't have the courage to tell your friends no. By weekend, ah, no, not the former you. The former you will rush to that bar with speed. But now you are finding out that there is a greater fortitude. There is a grace that helps men to say no. And you can look at them and say, gentlemen, this is not me again. Prayer is powerful. The last official thing Jesus did before his passion was prayer. He went to Gethsemane and prayed and prayed. The Bible says in one of the synoptics that he prayed repeating the same words three times. If Jesus did not pray, you would have been surprised what would happen on the way to Golgotha because he was in every way a man. That means... The weariness of men. Look, let me tell you, all men are men. One of the systems that separates you as though not a man is the possibilities that you encounter in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. You can get up and pray and in that prayer, you can receive an impartation. It's like a vaccination. The joy of the Lord. 
as soon as you step into the office here comes a lousy person programmed by darkness to frustrate your day and the director says I've been looking at you be careful and ordinary you say sir don't shout at me like that or you are my younger brother it's just because but because you have been secured in the place of prayer you exhibit qualities that are not given to men a man should be angry but you look and say it's alright sir God bless you and they say don't be keeping quiet like this so this is Nigeria you have been cultured I tell you why people behave as if they are not children of God something happens to you in the place of prayer most of our prayer life is not excited because it's, it's not exciting because it's need driven need driven as soon as you just quickly introduce yourself Lord God you are the lion of the tribe of Judah you are the multi-breasted one you, all those things are preambles quickly so that you just and said okay Lord I'm here now I'm here and you, you stop even praying again and say, Lord, I'm, this one, I'm not quoting any scripture again. I'm here to talk to you about this issue. How long will my husband keep behaving? Is it that you are not, you know, all those things. They are wonderful. There is, a, there is an aspect of prayer that can respond to petitions. But you don't know the blessedness of prayer until you see how exciting it is when prayer is focused on transformation. Are, are, are we together now? We just help the lady. So it's very important for you to understand this. Believers don't pray. Believers don't pray. I'm telling you this. Or believers pray wrongly. You just go and hold on to someone's, hold on to someone's building. Hold his window somewhere and you are crying and shouting. You see, I hope you are not embarrassed let me tell you sincerely we have to trust God for grace to help us to be wise the things of the spirit don't work like that let me teach you how success comes we're not discussing success but let me just this the moment you are seeking it you will never get it these things were never designed to be pursued I was teaching my people the other day listen let me tell you this Life is dimensional as programmed by God. And every dimension has the possibilities that are supposed to come. Are we together? So call it level one, two, three, four, five. If you are in level one in your understanding and perception and you want the result of level five, if you get it and bring it here, that level will fight it and send it out of your life you grow when you grow all the realities that accrue that level of growth will come to you success is attracted by who you are becoming not what you go do and get no it's why many people fail our labor is to try to draw things that are in dimensions that are higher than our understanding and perception the assignment is to journey with the Holy Spirit. As you transit to these realms, everything around you that is lower than that realm will be instructed to leave you. Your contacts, your friends, your clothes, your money, everything. There is a law that edits your life at every realm. See, this is why we are frustrated because some things we are doing there is a law that should be doing it. But because we do not understand that they have been pre-programmed, our worry over them. Understanding brings ease. So you will see a young man, for instance, who is just starting life and insists that he must fly business class. And while you are sitting there, your realm is fighting it. You know you are not supposed to be here. Your understanding how you know you are not there is only one aspect of your life is there when you grow everything grows you are in business class but your clothes are not for business class your mind is not for business class the recharge card in your phone is not for business it's proof that you you follow the window to be there when you are patient and you grow everything will grow together 
the same energy it takes to be fake is the same energy it takes to be real so we are frustrated that's why most of our prayer lives are full of requests and pain and shouting and say Lord I can't believe this we're in the same school with this person what I saw today I won't let you rest the Bible says, give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem you see those kinds of scriptures we, we just because the Bible is a prophetic book you can make it speak any language you want a herbalist can use the Bible to destroy you it's a prophetic book so we have to be very careful these needs and cares many times they come from the lusts that are enshrined in our hearts that were designed to be corrected in the place of prayer many things happen when we pray the purging of the spirit your motives are purged the need to prove a point is eroded quickly because God helps you to understand that growth is something that is natural with men that means I can live a former version of myself to another version. So when you see the former me, don't use the former me to judge how I will be tomorrow. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Though I fall, yet I will rise again. The average prayer life of a believer in Nigeria is need-driven. And there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that it makes no sense to pray for six hours asking for things it doesn't make sense do you have that much prayer request or is God that deaf if your prayer life is need driven 20 minutes is fair you are talking to an intelligent God rent oh God my wife oh God very simple you are, and, and you are ticking the list so why will I pray for five hours what am I asking for But if the prayer is for intimacy and growth, just saying thank you alone can take one hour. Mm. This is how the mature pray. While you are there, oh God, and someone can just be thinking, Your mercy, oh God. He's starting to pray, oh, look what you have done to me, mighty God. And before you sing in tongues to start, you, that one is just knocking on the gate. <laughs> That's why people pray well during retreats. Ketabara No prayer request. The angels are there. No request. I say, who is this man? I hope you know the angels study us too to know God more. The angels are not the highest of God's creation. Man is. So they depend on our interaction to know God the more too. And while the angels wait, the only vials they carry from us is an incense of worship and gratitude. For hours, you're just singing songs and blessing him. Acts chapter 2. This is the model from verse 42. Just turn to your Bible. The Bible says, ask for the ancient parts. It didn't say invent. There are ancient parts. These things are patterns. They are ordinances that preserve the move of God in the territory. Some of our fathers were not educated, but they had the privilege to work with the Holy Ghost. And they captured these dimensions. Acts chapter 2. I'll read from verse 42. Acts chapter 2 from verse 42. Let me read it very quickly. And they continued. Everybody say continued. This is the early church. The model that was created for us. The early church. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine. And fellowship. And in breaking of bread. And in what? Prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. And sold their possession and goods and parted them to all men, every man as every man had need. 46. And they 
continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart 47 praising God and having favor with all people and then the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved there is a model that if compromised will never host God God is a God of patterns his patterns must be obeyed to host his glory the regular convergence of believers listen let me tell you this it is the reason why I believe in excellence but we must be careful to not lose the texture of the correct exegesis of the word when believers are gathered together let me tell you this if you see the effect of losing out on God's patterns does not show in one year it doesn't even show in five years so you may think progress is being made there are things that the church is and there are things the church is not we must be careful to draw the line to know what the church is and what the church is not the regular convergence of believers is God speaking to us it's important I believe in the internet I believe in all of that but we read Psalm 133 and it was prophetic behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it says that state is like the head the oil that comes from the head of Aaron the priest so there is priesthood in that kind of gathering and then he says the system of transfer is that it starts from his head to his skirts to his body and then he says there not in that location in that strategy God has commanded the blessing there are things you cannot obtain in your personal prayer life there are things you cannot get alone it happens when there is a convergence of believers for the purpose of mentorship for the purpose of training not information training mentorship is not a transference of information mentorship is a meticulous guiding of a man it's more than just giving an information regular convergence of believers as 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 you are here seated remember your family let me tell you this you know why do you know sir every time a nation has a has serious trouble the correct way to deal with national issues is to go to the community because nations are made of communities and every community is made of a family so you address things that way dealing with things at a national level is a waste of time because every nation is broken into regions communities and the last bus stop is family so when evil wants to ferment and get to a national it starts from families then if unhindered communities then territories then the nation every thief came from a family every troublemaker came from a family every family must be a reflection of a true church a true church I teach my people again and again priesthood must be demonstrated even at family level when I talk of convergence like this I don't necessarily just talk about meeting in platforms like this which is important but even in your home there are men whose children have never seen them teach the word in the home they've seen them count money they've seen them argue about contracts but not to count this imagine how it will be that your children are sleeping in the night and you get up as the priest of the home Shabbos Koparanda Kata from the parlor to every room you are laying hands on everybody you lay hands on your wife she says, what's this? she says, no, 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 it's priesthood, sleep it's my duty I'm sanitizing the spiritual climate you are not a man of God though, but you are a priest 
One day, let me tell you what will happen. When you get up, your small son will get up with you. He will cry and insist to follow you. This is mentorship. I tell you why they punish lecturers and pastors. Because people don't do their homework at home. And they transfer every kind of trouble and say, just go to church. Pastor Dele will sort everything about your life. Are we together? One day your child will follow you while you are praying. And one day when you travel, he will wake up by that time alone. Ba, 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 ba. You'll be playing like a little boy. Lay hands on the mother. Lay hands on his toys. You think he's playing. Are we together? Where a father can sit with his family and say, look, once a week we are going to have Bible study. We will review what pastor taught. If you are under my roof, you are going to listen to me. Let me tell you the truth. I have a lot of people by God's grace that I raise and train. Nobody under my roof will not serve my God. No. I'm not one of those people that say, oh, be nice in the human right. If you are under my roof, you are going to serve my God. That's for sure. The day you're on your own, you can do what you want to do. But as far as it is under my roof, it's very important. Convergence of believers. When we were growing up, there were certain things we laugh at today that was the build-up of many of us. An average believer cannot tell you the books of the Bible. It looks little, but it's a serious issue. How many disciples um, um, does Jesus have? You hear how many you say 21, how many 22, 14, another person will say 3. You see, these things, they are not funny. It's a revelation of something we are losing. Hallelujah. People come to church and instrumentalists, once they finish playing, they will go and sit outside on a stone, browsing while preaching is going on. Once the man of God raises on, they'll quickly come, sit on the drums, sit on this, play, and, and the pastors will quickly arrange things. And go, well, how now? Yesterday we discussed, you know, church. See, some of these things our fathers did, it looked crude, but in a bit to transit, we didn't know what to throw away and what to preserve. We just threw everything away. There are things we must bring back. You don't like what I'm teaching you? That's the price for revival, look. Regular convergence. Number three. You want to mentor nations and territories and bring them to the Lordship of Christ. There will have to be an open display of real miracles, signs and wonders that go beyond the church walls. An open display of miracles, signs, wonders beyond the church walls. It creates convictions in the heart of men, the heart of the community. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. We are looking at the book of Acts. So you see it was prophetic that pastor was saying Study the book of Acts. Acts chapter 19, please. Verse 11. Let me read it. And God wrought special miracles. Say special miracles, please. By the hands of Paul. It says, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons. And the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of one skiver, a Jew and chief of the priest, which did so. And the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? 
And the man in whom the evil spirit did leapt and so on and so forth. Verse 17. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks. Also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear came on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. 18. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. 19. Many of them also which used curious acts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and found 50,000 pieces of silver 20 so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed please look up when pastor was sharing here about how the 1930 move started you heard what he said that apostle Babalola came out just to look for something to eat and saw a dead man let me tell you this there is too much talking among believers. It is the reason why the world is tired. Do you know they look at Christianity as a nuisance to civilization? Because there's too much talking and little doing. These things I write to you, O oh excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Real, genuine miracles. An outpouring of signs, wonders, miracles, not by men of God, by believers beyond the church wall. One madman, popular madman, meets Jesus Christ, and ten cities, ten cities are won within a moment. Let me tell you this the way we are doing evangelism now. If God does not help us, even in 100 years, we will not win half of our territory. You see the burden it takes to beg people? <clears throat> that strategy is deformed. We have to trust God for a dimension. There is no human being who sees the spectacular and ignores it as a common sight. No. John Wesley said, set yourself on fire and the whole world will come to watch you burn. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in an interruption of the course of men by an agency that is higher than this dimension. I believe in miracles. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe God can bring notable miracles. I believe the dead can rise. Many of you have heard the things that God has done in and through our ministry. Let me tell you sincerely. Well, I don't know how it works here, right here. But where I come from, you want a man to really love Jesus and sit down. You are going to have to trust God for grace. There used to be a gentleman years ago. True story. He was a capon in one of these cult groups. They call Highlanders. Somewhere around the south-south. This guy operated here in Lagos, operated somewhere. They locked him in prison. Men who depended on his ministry came and opened him out. I mean, he would kill you like chance play. He slept on a grave for three days to receive power. Like a grave in the night. You don't move, you don't drink water, you don't lie down like that. So if you want to shoot him or kill him, he will just like vapor. And you don't see him again. Now, true story. To cut the long story short. That gentleman came down. I don't know what brought him down to Zaria. So he came for our meetings. Ah, may you be powerful, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. The language this generation understands in the realm of the spirit. You know that this generation is not just men alone. Spirits too have their generation. The language is power. Are we together? He sat down in one of the overflows. According to him. He said that he travels to churches and when he sits down and watches men of God preaching, he just looks and says, oh dear, this is unfortunate. As weak as anything, can do anything I want to do with him. So when he came, true story, I just came on stage and as soon as I stood there, he saw people falling under the anointing outside. And he said, wow, that whether this man is using divination 
or is using real power. There is power in this place. I opened my mouth to speak and that was the last thing he could remember. All he saw was fire. That was it. I think they carried him outside or something. I can't remember what happened. That gentleman's life changed in a way and manner. One of the gentlemen in our protocol department, right? The one who walks, heads the transport unit. He was an occultist. A bad occultist. Someone invited him. And he came and stood before me and I looked at him. I remember that time. In less than five minutes, he was already broken and all those nonsense left him. His friends gave him seven days to return. They dead him. Seven days has become more than a decade. Listen, let me tell you. Until men see a display of the authentic power of God, they have a right to question it. Our fathers didn't go to school. But goodness, they had power. These men had power with God and power with men. The story he gave about Apostle Babalola and the rest. I don't know if you watched a video. I'm sure it was on, I'm not so much on social media. But there was a video one time of a river that just came out somewhere in the east. One river that just evolved out of nowhere. Huh? With water. And people were running and jumping there and getting healed, throwing their crutches. You, you remember that time? The way we are busy looking for money in this country, Seb. even when things are happening like this, nobody has the time to go and check. You just, which what river? Let me go and make sure that my allowance is released. Now, but <laughs> on a serious note, when that happened and they brought the video and I looked at it, I said, for me, I'm not concerned whether it's demonic or, or whatever. The issue is, over 3,000 people with no invitation in a dirty river in this our excellent world that even when there is no fun you can complain and those people came if you see the intelligent people passing through that dirty water one woman was just bathing herself passionately in that river that's to tell you listen is to tell you that beyond all these formations people are looking for real results real results you would thank pastor after this conference you would come and kneel down and say pastor thank you help that lady please men of God are not powerful again the limit of our power is this falling down that's it once you can get someone to fall down you move around as if you were giving an award Power is shown by the testimonies that follow. That you sit under an atmosphere, even if it's by mistake. L let me tell you this. If you were going somewhere and this is a shrine, and you enter by mistake, and say, sorry, I was looking for a junction. Your life would never be the same just because you entered by mistake. The man will say, bye bye, go. Until you see him later. He'll say, you came to see me. He said, no, I was just passing. I made it a personal goal. The highest time you must meet me to change is once. There is no reason why you should meet me twice to be changed. You can meet me twice to grow. But it's a cry I cried to God for many years. I said, Lord, put something on this vessel. That if I contact you once, you know by heaven and by earth. That your life will never be the same. This is the only thing that will make Gentiles come to your light. And kings to the brightness of your rising. Praise the Lord. I remember prophesying to a king. A first class king in this country. And God gave him a major breakthrough. And he invited me to come and pray in his palace. And, when, and you know when you get to the palace, you remove your shoe. I was, he said, I should enter. Those guys that hold uh, this thing were looking at me. And man, I said, don't, don't try me. You don't know what I did to your God that is bringing you. You know, these people just want to insult your intelligence because. One of the things you must receive in this conference is a true impartation of spiritual power. Results that show 
that you can go back home and say, Mommy, I came back from a conference. Where did you go to? You say, I came some, I left a soul. But when I went to a conference, I met a man. I hear that in this family, nobody rises. But I have come as one sent. I was mentored enough to know that the power of the Holy Spirit is not just for men of God. And you stand and pass a decree to the heavens. And things begin to shift and change. By next Sunday, it's your parents that will come with you to church. Listen, listen, let me tell you this. You know why many people don't go to church? Their reasons are justified until the demonstration of the power of God proves otherwise. They are tired of wasting their time. Nobody leaves what works. Nobody. It's not in the economy of men to leave what works. By the time you sit for three hours, your spiritual life is changed. Your business shifts. Everything about your life changes. Why will you not come by 5.30 and wait? In the days of the generals, by 2 a.m., they would stand on the queue waiting for a 6 o'clock service. We need power. Genuine power. Genuine spiritual power. No revival. Please hear me. Let's stop flattering ourselves with these tiny miracles here that create controversy. We are not even sure whether it happened or not. We are talking of notable miracles. Dimensions of the workings of the spirit that even unbelievers will testify and say, I don't love their God, but this one is too spectacular for silence. Hallelujah. Now, please listen. Many of you heard the testimony. Now, it's not, it's not an encouragement to be lazy. But this is a pastor that came from my Duguri. And he came and then relocated and all of that. And because of resources, finances and all of that, um, they, he had to suspend. The wife was still schooling. And, oh, praise God, the light is back then. He had to suspend her schooling for one, was it one semester or one session, so that they could stabilize. And then now that God helped them, they were going to go back so that she would finish up. You, you get the whole idea now? And then he came for one of our meetings, I think with the wife or so. When everything was done, the meeting was over. This is the testimony. When they went back to her school, and then they wanted to now go and register, they saw her result with A's and B's. She's done. Not one of those, those nonsense stage managed things that people come and stand on stage and, and speak garbage. It's old wives' fables. Real miracles with science. The man stood there. The woman stood there. What is this? Don't get used to your pain. Oh, there are anointings designed to trivialize challenges. See, let me tell you this. There are men that have done business with God. This is not pride. There are men that God has vowed a vow with. They have died to themselves. Death has worked in them. Shalom brakatoska de brakata. Shikes kabaruza mahas kabarunde keta. Ebre zato jamarus ke marutasia. Hallelujah. Please give us Psalm 66. Psalm 66. And verse 3. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated. 
seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, who was seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Say unto God, how terrible are thy works. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. It takes power to deliver what is yours to arrive. It takes power to mentor a territory, to, to break the, the, it says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Look, in two minutes, someone just lift your voice and enough is enough that everything that does not subscribe to the power of God in your life that in this conference he must let you go please lift your voice in two minutes and pray power the reality of spiritual power miracles signs Wonders, not stage managed testimony. Please pray, you came to church. Shalabarakatoka Seketa, my life must move forward. Break it forth on the left and on the right by the power of the Holy Ghost. Shalades Kabaronda Shalabada. Pray this morning. Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, Kim Madonna. Hallelujah. Please listen. Listen to me. When I was going to start ministry, I watched a documentary and Pat Robertson of CBN, 700 Club. He said when he was starting ministry, pastor, he asked the Lord of three things. He said, Lord, don't send me like this. Number one, give me wisdom. Number two, give me favor. Number three, give me the anointing for signs and wonders. When I heard it, I said, that's it. I went to God to in a fast. I said, don't send me like this. The people you are sending me to need real results. Don't send. I don't want to be a preacher fighting another man of God. Fight. No. Brand your impact with genuine signs. I prayed a prayer. And I cried to God. I said, Lord, any meeting you send me to, that whoever comes to, whether he's outside or wherever, by that contact, shift them to dimensions that will surprise them. Listen to me. Please listen. I submit to you that as a man of God, if the power of the Holy Spirit is not evident in your life, there is a dimension of revival you cannot capture. Hallelujah. There must be a heavy investment. The last four rows 
I'm seeing fire just coming down. The last four rows. The last four rows. The last four rows. Shelanda Prakutasiana. Please move. The last four rows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bukola. Bukola. Who is Bukola? I'm hearing a name. Bukola. Bukola. Huh? No. The person is wearing blue. No, not you. A, like a head tie and a cloth. Matching cloth. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. A head tie and match. Please help them. Make, um, are there ushers there? Please so that we don't have... I'm, this is what I'm. Who is that? What's your name? Bukola. Bukola. Bio. B a y o, not dio. Bio. B now like ball. B a y o. B a y o. B a y o. Please, where is that gentleman? Bio. Something in your shirt you are wearing is like brown. Here, your hand. It's not the same color with what you are wearing. This is, I'm seeing something like that in a vision. I want to pray. Don't, please don't come out randomly. Right, we are going to continue. One, two, three, four. Four miscarriages you've had. You've not had a child. Please, who is that? I don't know if you are here or someone. Help to coordinate them, please. Except God is not God. Whatever challenge came here with you, I stand by the God of heaven. He must let you go in this conflict. Um, Deborah Deborah I'm hearing a name Deborah 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 you are wearing a strange kind of weave on is it wig or weave on now this lady's thing is like is it purple like purple or something like that who is that verify just is her name Deborah my dear are you Deborah God is about to turn your family around oh I see what I saw now that's what color is this blue blue this is blue ladies yeah. father in the name of Jesus the Lord wants to bring look at me the month of August is a strange month of breakthrough for your family strange month of breakthrough for your family. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is a gentleman now that will begin to prophesy. The hand of God will come strong. When that happens, please bring the gentleman. It's not something you can control. It's the power of God that will come on you. The Lord is asking me to speak. Just one minute and we'll sit down. Carry the gentleman and bring him, please. In the name of Jesus, 
wisely by you. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord bless you. I decree and declare sounds of victory. I'm hearing people laughing by the Spirit. No, no, I mean under the anointing. Strange laughter. Strange laughter by the Spirit. It's not something that is mechanical. Please bring that gentleman. When I'm done with you, you just go. Just shift. I just want to prophesy to you. Madam, this woman, lift your hand. I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head. Right now, I stretch my hands. Let that anointing come upon your life and shift you. That chain I'm seeing on your hand, I break that chain right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I break that chain right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that true? Praise the Lord. Now, please listen, everyone. Play the keyboard for me. I've shared your pastor's burden. Um, this, this, this land, when he spoke about someone who was injured, I don't know whether the people are here who were injured because of the stampede yesterday. I know that there are crowds of people here. Um, I lead a very, very large ministry, and I know what it is and the pain when people are injured. And... It is not something that I usually would do. But honestly, I discern that this is true. I'm calling on everybody following and everybody watching. Let's put our hands together. I will also participate. Let's put our hands together and see to it that by the grace of God, that this property is fully acquired by this ministry. Are we in agreement on this? So that so that there can be an expansion and it can make room I feel very pain that a number of people are locked up inside and outside there and it is usually not my culture to do this boss it is the way of the kingdom that every time the tabernacle is about to be built the resources come from the people so it is not unscriptural. It is true that people have been manipulated. It is true that people have siphoned resources to put in their pocket. And I continue to say that any man of God that deceives God's people, God will judge that person. That is true. I do not believe in manipulating people. A man of God's blessings should come from his obedience to the principles of the kingdom. Are we together? So it is, it is a very, very serious thing. And I know that, I don't know how maybe this announcement has been made before, but I know there are people following online. There are ministries following online. There are businesses following online. I'm aware of, of a threshold amount that can and should be committed. Uh, I will not announce it because of the logistics around it, but it is very, very important. I know the property is in hundreds of millions and a lot of people should put resources down some of you God has helped you I know that there are many of us that God you know is still helping we are coming up some of us God has helped us we have seen the faithfulness of God in our lives and some of us here represent companies represent businesses represent ministries represent organizations that are doing well are we together and i do not want this project to be a project where you sit down and say let the rich go and give money they are the ones that have money that philosophy is what keeps people down number two 
never do anything by force and coercion especially as it regards giving if there be a willing heart that's the system of the kingdom because every time you come by force and coercion you've already lost the blessing but number three never again say i don't have something to give it's not true everybody is a giver but your giving is directed towards your area of passion that's why you can drop 10 naira as offering and buy a shoe of 100,000. It's not that you are broke. It's that where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Praise the Lord. I don't even stay in Lagos. But I, I reckon with the fact that this is a move of God. I, and, and I'm standing to lend my integrity and to lend everything on this project to say let's put hands together. Pastor Dele is a man of God who loves God and I know sincerely I love him and his wife and it will be it will be unchristian to just come and see a project like this and all the team the people that work hard to make this thing this conference has been running for five days laboring in the spirit and building we have the last session tonight that I will not want you to miss for any reason because truly that will be a defining moment for you but right now as i just pause here um i really want to challenge us i don't know how this thing will be but i have everybody if you are a minister you can sow as a person you can sow as a ministry we have to put our hands together the account number is open is is on the screen there and you can do a transfer. It's a sacrifice. It's not a seed. Let me just say it up front. It's a sacrifice. And it's not a seed. Praise the Lord. Now, let me, let me say something. Um, if God put in your heart by his grace. And you have the capacity to sow from a million naira and above. Please, I would like you to see, Pastor, I would like to at least pray for you because a million naira is a sacrifice. And it's, it's not that I trivialize everybody's sacrifice, but um, someone should not commit a million naira. And then you look at the person and say, oh, God bless you. No, you should be able to encourage the person. Are we together now? There's nothing to hide. There's nothing to pretend. There's no games to play. This is true. I know that there are people here who are agreeing and saying, look, if we can have around more than the people here, we have people following online. And if everybody can say, look, I'm bringing a million, two million, five million, ten million, and all of that, you can pray and all of that. But we have to make this thing work. We have to make this thing work. So um, there may not be time, and I don't want us to go into the ceremony of now saying if you want to give a million and above, you come out here. But this is what will happen. Please listen. And I don't want you to just get emotional and come out to make pledges that you cannot redeem and create the expectation of a ministry and then run away and change your line and do some of these dubious things. We are Christians. Praise the Lord. Let every man give as he has purposed in his heart. But also there are seasons when even your bread, you cast it upon the water. And the Bible says you will find it after many days. Praise the Lord. So you will, you will join me. I'm praying that at least all those who will be listening to this. This is my own target. I am praying that God will touch the heart of 200 people to bring the sacrifice of a millionaire around the world. This is my prayer. That God, and we are going to pray together. Praise the Lord. 200 people to bring the sacrifice of a millionaire. And I will be the first of them. Praise the Lord. Yes. It will be, it will be unfair. It will be unfair to make such a call and then stand. We as men of God must be examples. Praise the Lord sincerely it's something that i prayed and i said no we have to be part of this so this is me number one and we're trusting god that 
all the people that God is going to be speaking to, some are in Lagos, some listening, some will be listening to this maybe after this time. Please understand that the morale is not just to raise money as you are used to. Let me correct this very clearly because I know that there are ministries that don't have any project that is worthwhile but just that obsession to continue to extract resources. Don't confuse what we are doing with some manipulation somewhere. This is a ministry of integrity. I'm a man of integrity myself. Praise the Lord. So, but this is a call that is necessary. And when it has to be uh, to something that is for our king, we must stand on a shame. Praise the Lord. No one is coerced. No one is manipulated. The ark of God was always designed to be carried upon the shoulders of men. So if there be a willing heart, as the Lord speaks to you, you probably may not be able to have a million naira, but 500,000, 200,000, 100,000, 50,000. Let there be something that when you see this building tomorrow, you will know that my seed played a role in someone's salvation. That as lives are being changed, you are not doing it just because you want to be blessed. First, you are doing it because you love the Lord. And it's an honor to be part of this revival that is coming. And then secondly, because he has so programmed in his system that every time we give, there is a system of multiplication that also comes. This is the correct theology of giving. Are we together now? So please, you are here and you know that God has put it in your heart. Even if you are online, online, and God is putting it in your heart, whether you are a member of this church or not, you can go ahead to call and, and then once you get in touch with Pastor Dele, um, he will give you the information. I promise that I will talk with you personally and I will pray with you and bless you. I really will do it. It's not some stage managed thing. So for those who have that capacity and God is granting you grace, you can talk to your loved ones about it. There is a worthy project that demands the heart of people who love God. And once that happens as we're done, Please, as pastor directs, I will be glad to talk with you in the office to pray and speak over your life. Is that all right? Can we rise and pray on this project? In one minute, lift your voice and say, Father, this land, we receive it and we receive the resources. This is the land that has blessed you. Many of you have received prophetic words. Is someone praying? I believe that by this call, a miracle is going to happen here. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare we possess this land. We possess this land. We possess this land. We are trusting you, O oh God, for over 200 people by the Spirit of God that you will touch to come in not by coercion, not by manipulation, according to the measure of the grace that you have provided for the sake of the house of God, not for personal aggrandizement, not to form the lust of the flesh but to see Jesus lifted and to turn this place into an apostolic and a prophetic center of revival we decree and declare right now we first sow the seed of prayer we sow the seed of intercession and we decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost we are willing givers we are contributors in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let me pray for everyone generally. Father, we still believe you are the God that delivers. You are the God that lifts. You are the God that blesses. You are Ebenezer. I have shared with your people and one of the things we have learned about you is that you are a God of miracles. Your people have tabernacled here right from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yesterday, and into this morning. They have made sacrifices. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend 
to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.